Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. If you're wondering why it took me so long to make a video on Battlefield 1's new campaign footage, it's not because I'm not interested, but rather it's because I was in Kansas City this past weekend visiting the National World War I Museum and Memorial. I put together an album of about 140 photos you can check out after this video. The link is in the video description. I'll be going back to the museum to film properly in the next couple of weeks. But you're here for my thoughts on Battlefield 1's single player, and let me tell you, I am extremely impressed. I'll start with the 12 minutes of campaign footage from TwitchCon. The footage shown is from the game's prologue, and Battlefield 1 gives you a gut kick right out of the gate, juxtaposing slow, meandering music with some of the most brutal combat I've seen in a video game for a long time. I mean, this guy gets stabbed in the hand and then beats a German soldier unconscious with the same injured hand. It's insanity, and it absolutely should be. Dice sets the tone of the prologue early on by mentioning the sheer number of soldiers that fought in World War I and how it ended nothing, but it changed everything. The developers then drive home the futility of the conflict just prior to the hands-on gameplay with the lingering words, you are not expected to survive. And many people did not. I'm not sure where the battle in the prologue takes place, but it looks like this is the part of Battlefield 1 where you play as a member of the Harlem Hellfighters. I say that since there's a mixture of French and American equipment visible on these soldiers, and the soldier telling you to hold the line earlier is wearing a side cap with US buttons. We might be looking at part of the Mers Argonne offensive and the German counterattack on the village of Seychaux. It's said the Harlem Hellfighters never lost a man through capture, lost a trench, or a foot of ground to the enemy, and they don't seem to yield in the Battlefield 1 prologue. Such devotion to holding the line did not come without cost. In the Mers Argonne offensive, the Hellfighters lost nearly one third of their fighting men as casualties. Battlefield 1's prologue captures this by replacing your character with another after he dies. There is no second chance for Harvey Nottaway. I wish DICE had used the names of actual soldiers in the prologue. I searched the casualty databases for the names of the fallen soldiers and didn't find any real matches. It would make Battlefield 1 that much more authentic to remember an actual person killed in combat, but I suppose there's also considerations for the surviving descendants. Either way, many of these soldiers are now nothing more than names. Watching the tank gameplay was the most profound experience for me. The vehicles lumber through no man's land, destroying everything in their path. They seem unstoppable, yet there's always a bigger fish. The moment I can't get over is the German soldier huddled up against the remains of a brick wall. He's not a threat, he's just curled up in a ball praying that death by some miracle spares him. Yet tomorrow, he could fire the bullet that kills your comrade. There is more tension in that moment than all of the past Battlefield 1 campaign decisions. Do you fire? The player in the prologue makes the decision to let him live. I find myself grimacing at the game, not because it doesn't appear fun or challenging, but because this game was all too real for millions of people. When the two remaining soldiers come to a standoff, you can't blame them for standing down. They are all that remains. The prologue emphasizes the absolute worst in trench warfare and the futility of it. It was, in every sense of the term, industrialized slaughter. I am hopeful the epilogue of Battlefield 1 will instead show mankind's resilience. In the introduction to Through Mud and Blood, we follow the war story of the chauffeur-turned-tank driver Danny Edwards. Random fact for you, there's a famous barbecue restaurant pretty much right next to the World War I Museum in Kansas City named Danny Edwards, so Dice thinks they're pretty clever. Edwards joins this tank crew at a very pivotal moment. It's right before the British push to Cambrai in 1918 and part of the Hundred Days Offensive leading to the end of World War I. Over 300 tanks took part in that assault. Edwards' tank, Black Bess, is a Mark V. There was actually a real tank named Black Bess in World War I. It was lost in action near Cambrai a year earlier than the war story in Battlefield I. It was then captured by the Germans in 1918, so it's possible this tank serves as an inspiration for Black Bess in Battlefield I. We know Edward's war story is centered around learning to work as a team, so meeting the crew is important, especially since they aren't getting along. In the background here, there's a sign that reads, Workers of the World Unite. This references Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels' Communist Manifesto, both of whom were German. The phrase was also used in opposition to World War I. Because it's inside a British tank, it's probably going to be a point of contention between members of the crew, especially anyone religious. 
Here again, we see faith scrawled on the tank. It also looks like there might be a book, possibly a Bible, in the compartment next to the carrier pigeon. I like that Dice is treating the tank like a person in Battlefield 1. Finch, the crewman here, warns Edwards about swearing, saying, quote, she doesn't like it when you swear, end quote. It's an interesting comment reflecting a more superstitious time and giving Black Bess quite a bit of personality. There's always a polarizing character in these types of stories, and for Through Mud and Blood, it appears to be the left side gunner, McManus. He's immediately hostile towards Edwards. I'm sure he's got a heart of gold or something, but right now, he just looks like a dick. McManus has a rosary hanging from his weapon station, so if anyone's religious on the Black Best crew, it's going to be him. By contrast, the right side gunner, Pritchard, seems significantly less wound up. He jokes and cracks the occasional smile. The tank's commander, Townsend, has a strong presence and sense of control. Once Edwards is at the controls, Townsend asks Edwards the rhetorical question, we'll get through this together, right Edwards? And Edwards responds without much confidence. Although Through Mud and Blood is focused on what's happening inside the tank, the introduction video ends with a shot of Black Bess crossing friendly trenches. Generally, tanks in World War I were used piecemeal to support infantry instead of attacking in large groups. Infantry depended on these vehicles to help keep them alive. If the crew inside a Black Bess can't do their job, they're not just putting their own lives at stake. Through Mud and Blood will be one of the playable missions in Battlefield 1's Play First Trial with EA and Origin Access on Xbox One and PC respectively on October 13th. The other mission is the Storm of Steel Prologue. The 10-hour Play First Trial also includes access to five multiplayer maps, the St. Quentin Scar, Amya, Sinai Desert, Foul Fortress, and Suez. Overall, I'd say this looks like the best Battlefield 1 campaign to date, and it seems to capture the essence of World War 1. I'll be doing a full Let's Play for Battlefield 1 after release. In the meantime, don't forget to check out my photos from the National World War 1 Museum and Memorial in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share on websites like Facebook and Twitter, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.